This video shows how webhooks work on the platform. In web development, a webhook is a method of augmenting or altering the behavior of a web page or web application with custom callbacks. These callbacks may be maintained, modified, and managed by third-party users and developers who may not necessarily be affiliated with the originating website or application. Many services use webhook integration. For example, payment notifications in Stripe or new submissions in Typeform. Let's create a new webhook. Go to the API section, then Webhooks, and create a new webhook. By default, a scenario that handles all incoming objects will be spawned for this webhook. We can copy the webhook address and paste it into the service we want to integrate. There will be a new data structure with the first test object corresponding to the webhook under the database section. Go to Integrations, Webhooks. It's time to test the integration using Postman. Let's send an empty post request. As you see, the result was a success. Refresh the webhook structure and you'll see a new, empty object. Let's add a JSON body with one field to the request. Send it and refresh the webhook structure again. As you see, we've received a webhook with the data specified. Similarly, we can change the headers of a request. Let's add a custom parameter. Send a request and look at the object that appeared in the structure. The header field contains our custom parameter. This way, you can make a webhook authorization with a kind of token in the header. Let's look at the scenario that handles all new objects from the structure. If you want the processing to be synchronous, that is, a particular response is returned to the service that sent the webhook, we can add a synchronous processing scenario. But in this case, we have to turn off the trigger for all new objects, otherwise ours will be processed twice. We can set up a specific response that our API will receive for synchronous processing. We use the API response step. And in the response field, we can write a string or generate a JSON or XML using an object and other variables. Save the changes and send another request using Postman. We get the response we configured in the scenario. If we look at the counters and logs, we see that the new objects are currently being processed synchronously and only once. As the webhook data comes in JSON format, let me tell you that for passing a JSON, we usually use the JSON step, where we specify a schema, which is a set of fields, and set up the passing. You'll find a lot more detail in the documentation.